Welcome to Comics Bazaar, the channel of comics commentary and arcana. This video features Gambit number five. This is the fifth and final issue of the 2022 new miniseries by Chris Claremont and Sid Koshin. So this cover is by uh, Wilts Portacio and um, it uh, features Gambit using his kinetically charged bow staff on uh, this uh, bounty hunter um, called Canny Bird. We learned that inside and this other character here is called Tsunami. And uh, this character here is Bounty, who is yet another bounty hunter, but not allied with this pair. And in fact, um, she was created by Chris Claremont way back in his uh, run on Fantastic Four with Salvador La Roca. So let's open this one up. And um, uh, useful in these um, uh, uh, mini series is every issue comes with um, a introductory page that catches you up on the main characters, but also the backstory from previous issues regarding the introduction of characters Marissa de Castro, her mother Gabriela de Castro, um, the appearance of <clears throat> Storm's ancestor Ashake, the villain Dominic Solars and Bounty as well, and then Lila Cheney's been featuring as well. Um, she uh, turned up in the previous issue. So in the previous issue, um, uh, Storm and Gambit um, head to a concert of Lila Cheney's because um, there is a bounty out on Lila Cheney as well as Gambit and they're going to meet up with her and Gambit got into a fight with this character Bounty who um, he's come to an arrangement with and so they're sharing drinks while um, little Roe, D.H. Storm is enjoying the concert with Gabriela de Castro. And in the meantime, or at the end of the last issue, Marissa uh, was stabbed and she has been um, taken captive by this very horrific, freakish character, Bonehead. So we see ejected from the top of his uh, shoulders, this decomposed uh, skeletal skull. And now she's going to be sucked in by these tentacles that have grabbed her into uh, the torso of Bonehead. Um, it's pretty freakish what happens um, in this issue. So we'll, we'll see that soon. So uh, the creative team is Chris Claremont, uh, writer and Sid Koshin, um, artist. So Sid Koshin is an Indian um, from um, Bombay or Mumbai. And um, this is the only work of his I'm familiar with. I've said it before in previous videos. I like it. I see it as a blend of a bit of John Bushima, a bit of uh, Goran Parloff, a bit of manga. Um, pretty fluent stuff. And Espen uh, Grundit Urine is the color artist here with uh, v uh, VCs Clayton Cowles um, as letterer. So um, everybody catches uh, uh, um, um, Marissa's scream. So their attention is caught here. And um, basically uh, they look to find out what's happened to her while the concert goes on. So here's Lila Cheney. Um, and an interesting feature of how she's dressed at this concert is it's exactly uh, the clothes that she wears when she turns up in Uncanny X-Men 273 and what she's wearing in 274 and 275. So a little bit of research done there. And also keep an eye on this um, keyboard player here. We'll see her in close up a little later on and it'll be um, a little bit of a surprise to you perhaps who that turns out to be. So they, uh, the team uh, goes after uh, Marissa and then they find that she has been um, sucked into uh, this bounty hunter uh, Bonehead. And this is um, his um, compares, Canny Bird here and, um, and Tsunami. So um, Gambit, um, of course, has been having a little bit of a romantic relationship with Marissa and he's determined to um, save her. But this is a pretty horrifying um, anchor image here uh, from Koshin. And what's happened is that um, this guy, uh, um, Bonehead, <clears throat> feeds on the biological... Um, um, aspects of the victims he uh, takes into his torso and so he's started transforming her as he says here what need for biological eyes meet 
tech is so much more efficient, like my body just needs the proper fuel to run it. So um, people are the fuel that he uses to run his body. That's where you come in, where your face leads, your body will follow till there's nothing left but bones. The harder you fight, the more it hurts, the more delicious the triumph. So a truly horrific uh, turn of events here. Um, I was, um, when I read this the first time around, I was kind of shocked to see this um, and to see where Claremont is taking this story. Like there is, uh, there's no holds barred um, in what's going on here. And then we have um, uh, Gabriela de Castro and um, Aurora um, um, getting caught up in uh, tsunamis, um, power over water, obviously. And Ashake, who is Aurora's um, ancestor, um, um, uh, um, a priestess, um, 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 turns up astrally in order to uh, uh, psych up um, Aurora in terms of um, um, uh, what telling, reminding her what she's learned from um, her training. And as she says here, I did not simply teach you how to fight. I taught you both how to win. And now prove to me I did not do so in vain. So she was also training um, Marissa's mother, um, Gabriella. And it turns out that Gabriella also has some kind of shared an ancestry with Storm and with Ashake. And so now it's revealed that not only is Storm using her powers here against Tsunami, but also that Gabriella has got some strange powers as well and is transformed. Um, but it's not clear whether she's a mutant or what's going on here. Um, so some surprises here in the finale issue. And then we go back to uh, the fight between Bounty, Gambit, and um, the other galactic mercenaries and Gambit, of course, concentrating on Bonehead and trying to free Marissa um, from um, this horrific uh, situation that she's in. So we continue along here. And um, yeah, this is like she's decomposing in front of him um, as she is losing hold of her um, bodily integrity. And um, Bounty helps here, uh, throwing Canny Bird in the uh, path of these um, eye beams from Bonehead. And then we uh, flip back to the concert and this character, Dominic Solars, he's kind of a bit player really here at the end, um, looks to shoot, um, he looks to shoot uh, 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 Lila Cheney, um, but um, Marissa's astral figure, um, uh, manipulates Bonehead and pushes him in front of the bullet and then Lila herself acts and takes Solars out with um, the microphone and this is the key panel here so um, she uh, thanks Alison there for handing her um, a new microphone play it loud my darlings and play it fun so, and we can see there these little star-shaped earrings that Alison is wearing. This is Alison Blair. This is Dazzler. And so what that reveals is that for Claremont, after Uncanny X-Men 261, um, Dazzler went back to um, playing keyboard as she was doing back in Uncanny X-Men 214 with Lila Cheney's band. And you can see more clearly here the outfit Lila's wearing that connects with... Um, what Jim Lee had her wearing in Uncanny X-Men uh, 273 and 274. So the concert starts back in earnest and then Gambit faces off against Bonehead here. And while he's fighting Bonehead on the physical plane, Marissa is fighting Bonehead here um, on the astral plane. And you can see he's given these kind of uh, demonic horns here because he's, he's a real kind of vampiric uh, demonic type figure. So she defeats him. Um, it's pretty wild stuff. And ultimately um, destroys him there while Gambit is destroying um, him from the outside. And Gambit manages to um, free the remains of Marissa from um, the destroyed bonehead there um, on those um, in these panels. And then really we're into the aftermath of the issue. And it's um, a little bit downbeat because Marissa's truly um, ravaged 
by what Bonehead has done to her. We can see her whole face is disfigured and um, she has an emotional reunion with her still transformed um, mother as well. And, um, and then we start moving towards uh, the end of the issue where um, Aroro is watching um, from the rafters um, this uh, terrible situation uh, with Marissa and a decision is made that um, that she should be um, um, go with um, Lila in order to um, see what might be done about um, um, healing her in her um, disfigured condition. And then we have this little romantic moment um, between Marissa and Gambit. And then we have our um, final uh, page where um, uh, Aurora asks what happened to Solar's bounty took him one more favor he owes her. And then um, uh, uh, Roro and Gambit back together again. Um, they are um, en route to uh, have themselves whole new adventures. And all of this is taking place in um, the months that were suggested in a montage um, in the middle of Uncanny X-Men 267. So there's the possibility here um, in the narrative caption about going on to have whole new adventures. And you know what, that's just what they did, that there could be um, a sequel uh, to this miniseries set in the same period. So pretty nice art here, a nice combination of the art and the coloring. And that's something I just wanna note because sometimes in relation to these modern comics, the art, or sorry, the coloring can muddy the art. But I think there's a nice balance here between um, the ink lines and the art. I think it's all complementary and um, it works well, um, in my opinion. And then um, there's a little bit of um, a kind of an editorial page here and then some little kind of footnotes in terms of um, key issues uh, where um, Uncanny X-Men 248, where Rose Saga begins in earnest, 267, where the Gambit series, this series takes place. Uh, Fantastic Four, 1998, number 14, Bounty's first appearance. And then X-Men Epic Collection, volume 17, Dissolution and Rebirth, collecting Uncanny X-Men 248 through 267. So this is the period. And of course, um, 266 is Gambit's first appearance. Um, so I do hope that you enjoyed this um, short review and commentary on um, the concluding issue, the finale, of this uh, new series uh, by Chris Claremont, this mini series Gambit. Um, do I recommend it um, to viewers? Yes, I do, um, especially if you're a Gambit fan. Um, this is um, a great series in terms of a blend of Claremont on form. Um, there's twists and turns. There's some shocking turns of events um, um, throughout the series. And it dovetails nicely into uh, Claremont's original classic seminal 16-year uh, run on Uncanny X-Men. So there's a lot here to please uh, new fans and old fans. So if you like the video, please do so on the channel. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for more content like this.